now the hangout is live. That's the sum of the button. So that it's live. So right now it would be really nice to see some sort of response that you can show that the Let's see if, if there are anyone maybe uh, maybe we are on the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can try to watch it in here. Say hello. Hello. There we go. We don't see and then uh, we can change. Yes. Because the YouTube channel is live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so we just need to just close it. I just close it. You can basically go to South Panel. It would be so annoying if you could look at it. Oh, it's quite a. Hello? So, does it be some sort of laughter? Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 So I'm happy to see all the nice and positive comments so far. We, uh, we, we're so excited and we've been running around with our eyes. Uh, uh, we've been super happy for the year we've been doing it so far. So we've been doing it now and we've been doing it so far. Thank you so much for all the comments and all of us. We've been doing it so far. 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 It's, uh, it's, it was a bit crazy yesterday because we were releasing it for the first time online for our pitch color bias. Um, this is the sneak peek premiere, uh, which actually is not online anymore now. Um, as now the release comes out in. Um, on the 22nd, I think. We're really looking forward to that because it's going to come out and then we'll go ahead with the new Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to serve the rest of the session. Yeah, it seems like right now it's 75. No, 65. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that they're coming. So, you can see some of the people are watching, but you can't see the comments. comments. Ah, it's the bad audio. Shit. Okay, maybe we can do something about that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna uh, try to speak a little louder now. Yes. So you can uh, hear what we say. Is it better now? Then, uh, we have to wait for oh, no. the delay a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but one of the questions we got in the on the YouTube is that um, we were asked who the characters are going to be in the series. So, like, and that's a very good question because in the next Kickstarter we want to. We want to make you, the beggars, choose who to follow in this, in the, in the, in the series. Because each episode, now we have an episode with V2 and Gilman. We have an episode with uh, uh, Emirat and Lithium. <laughs> they don't even know. Oh, no, yeah. that sucks. No, so oh, now you can hear us. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, um, in the series, we're going to have um, a tons of characters, which you're going to see in the new Kickstarter. It's a lineup where you have Richard and Wilhelm can be new characters, 
Megan can continue character us, and the, those are the boys who get the map in the reward. We have Sylvia and Tatiana who can be new characters. Uh, these girls are the girls who are jumping on the backs of the horses um, in the first world. Yeah. And uh, then we have uh, Brun, who is the hero you see in the end of Tales of Lithuan, the hero who is getting the 10, and uh, also the guy who drops the map to return Wilhelm in the first reward. Then you have, um, then you have uh, Uru and Sid and Tira, who are gang members. Tira is the daughter of Mia, who and Mia got stabbed by Wilhelm and got killed in the reward. But she had a daughter, and she wants revenge over Billy. Um, we're gonna see more in the comic. We're gonna release along with the premiere, the stretch goal from last week's time. Um, yeah, and uh, so they also have an episode. And then we have a new character called Flynn, who is the son of Vito. Mm -hmm. It's a mix between a lizard and a human because uh, Vito got uh, laid with the lizard queen. On a old adventure, he's a really gross, human, warm-blooded uh, lizard, with uh, uh, and he's a teenager, with um, and a warrior lizard. That's even, even. Um, and then the last characters. Um, oh, uh, sorry. And all these characters are going to be decided by you. Who are we? Who we're going to follow? Because each episode will be following these new characters. And Emerald is, of course, also one of the characters. Because uh, we didn't quite finish her story, as you saw. And yeah. uh, I see a question it's where people would like to hear something uh, studio about it. Yeah. And uh, what is that? Like, uh, what did you meet the first time? We were basically at the same class uh, at the animation workshop uh, in Denmark. In Denmark. Where we did the, the types of animation for us. So uh, these two guys were the ones that teamed up with the reward, and uh, I basically did uh, actually a lot of 3D work because it's sort of find your focus through the school. And it's really 3D at that time, sort of appealed to me. I wanted to, to make some sort of two and a half D kind of thing where you sort of combine the, the medium of the mm -hmm. animation and the mm -hmm. oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, where I want to sort of combine the, the idea of 2D with a 3D uh, concept. Yeah, and then uh, the war guys, they, they, they did their epic defenses and stuff all the way through the education. There's a lot of the uh, animation and the Game Boy and all that stuff. Yeah, we, um, we really like uh, fantasy, and I think that's basically how me and Clement. So uh, through Dragon Quest and uh, liking the same games and uh, animations during school. Yeah, and fantasy and running dragons and all the nerd stuff that uh, we just loved. That we were and we just connected and we found the inspiration for the world as well. And I just saw a question about what program we used to animate in. And we used a program called TV Game. Uh, very nice program, sort of similar to uh, Photoshop. You can uh, very much recommend it. It's really nice. There's also a question that uh, says, Does uh, Elytra keep his eyebrows up with gel? No, he keeps it up with his manis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, each time he goes, uh, he wakes up from bed, you know, the eyebrows are kind of hanging down here, and then he uses his muscles to kind of force them up like this. <laughs> Yeah, how is, uh, is the sound quality better or is it uh, still really bad? So, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. then, uh, so, okay, so do you know what where the, the mic is? The mic is over. That's the mic. <laughs> Hello? Okay. We move it from. So we have to shout. We're, we're going to be really close to you so you can hear what we're saying. 
but <laughs> you cannot uh, see the forest, the beautiful forest in the background. Yeah. It's a wallpaper. It's not real. You know, it's big solutions. This country is. Uh, it's not a part of the the Danish landscape. Some is true for sure. Uh, oh. I'm testing it. How skilled do you have to be before you enter the animation workshop? Um, people definitely, including myself, recommend to do a lot of the life drawing study before, because what you learn at the school is animation uh, and not drawing, basically. So, so if you if you don't know sort of the humans' proportions and other stuff, you are sort of behind at the at the beginning. So all the basic stuff should be there, and uh, a lot of trophy and life study is uh, the way to go. And therefore, uh, the amazing ways of set up, set up this uh, drawing uh, academy. Like, it's just one course of the, uh, one course of the, um, of, yeah, life drawing, like each day from, uh, from nine to, to four, where you basically draw all these uh, beautiful naked people and sort of get into the foundation of, of, uh, of, of this world drawing. Yeah. Mm. There's also, um, Nimrod Kimmy here says, you guys managed to capture everything I ever liked in my childhood and put it into effect in your videos. And it's brilliant. What are your main inspirations for the style of the world? I think, uh, I think we can ask a different, uh, answer differently, but uh, mainly for me, it's, um, it's the way of getting away from the real life and getting excited about adventure, like, uh, in the uh, like uh, when you play a game and you get a game like Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask, you know, you're so hyped about getting into this world and um, and discovering it further. I think the best uh, the best adventures and games are the ones where you can discover a uh, universe and get involved in the story. And that's also why Dungeons and Dragons and role playing is much more cool when the game master makes you feel a part of like a book and. Uh, like, and her Potter, a lot of rings or something. What do you think? Can you I think uh, I remember I watched the Lord of the Rings when I was a little kid, and I was uh, super into the film. And I watched the the like, extra material a million times. And I loved it. I wanted to be part of it, and uh, that feeling of kind of going on an adventure with your with your best friends and just exploring this really exciting fantasy world. Was really appealing to me, and I felt that kind of feeling was similar when we played the Dungeons and Dragons, because you go out and, uh, and explore this like, fantasy uh, from your imagination world with your friends, and I just really wanted to capture that uh, for fun and childhood and uh, the imagination you have as a kid that a, a tree can be a giant that you're fighting with. I really liked that, and then I also liked the energy and the more sort of untraditional storytelling that a lot of the Asian films and Japanese films that I've seen has some really like mind game, take a country to the Masaki Yuasa as a director, is one of my favorite and amazing directors. And uh, he made a series called The Tiny Galaxy that I really like as well. Uh, and the way that they sort of turn around the story and uh, not necessarily go by the traditional type of things, but they can turn it around and upside down. I really like that as well. So, a relevant uh, question or uh, it's a common part up here, which is uh, that each animated series should have a proper intro with sort of the reward. And it's a, uh, it, it's a real question. Well, yeah, exactly. And uh, we as well think that is right. Uh, each epic series needs that sort of intro and uh, we have developed it. It's very close to be done, actually so close that it's going to be part of the news for 20 uh, seconds. So uh, even though you have seen everything, we still miss this little spot of a really nice issue that we've done uh, the last couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, also, as you say, Karel, it's also the, the song we used in the trailer. That's also the song of the intro, but uh, it's uh, it's more crisp in the new intro. Yeah, it is uh, made uh, HD, but in the sound uh, world. <laughs> Yes, my game, my favorite. Yeah. yeah. So we tried to go for the like the, the opening style of the when Pokemon, the opening of Pokemon is really nice because it's so energetic and has a sort of a little bit kitsch, a little bit uh, awkward style, but it's uh, really, really fun. 
we just said you're in the right mood and we wanted to have this sort of make a little bit fun of the series while we get in the mood and set it up. Uh, so yeah, we hope that you, you get the feeling and see the intro. So it's going to be super exciting to show that to you as well. Awesome. Uh, you're going to see the 22nd of April, it's going to get out. And this time this intro is going to get out. Yes. Let's see the devices for those who are aimed towards animation, making animated shots. I'm currently doing them at the moment, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. I mean, first of all, uh, I think the stories, uh, if they really need to go through, then it needs to come from the inside, like you have something that you actually want to, to share. Mm. Mm. Have some good friends when you do it. Uh, I think many people do a job by themselves, but uh, I think stories come much more to life when you have someone to ping pong with and that you do something that you, you like yourself more than doing something that you see other people are successful, and then it definitely becomes better. Mm. I also think, uh, to segue into another question that someone said, that the tone of the episode really changes how to through what emotion is setting or going for. Uh, I think when you're telling a story, it's really important that you know what you're telling, that you, uh, if you don't, for example, if, it's a, if it was about childbirth, there's none of us know anything about we would research on it and sort of figure out what is it that, that we can relate to and how we tell that story. And it was the same with this film that we wanted to tell a story of a relationship. And when you're really focused on a goal, that you can uh, you can lose what you have around you if you don't pay attention to what you already have, what treasure you already have, if you're just searching for that thing beyond the rainbow. Um, and that was something we could relate to during school and doing a, working hard on the film and the Kickstarter. So finding something that you, you deeply know and it just lies in your gut feeling and you can you can always answer that a lightning. Um, yeah, so really be true to what you know. Uh, tell the truth, be honest, and just uh, go with the gut feeling you have. Yes. Yeah, so person who is here, uh Julian Julian was here, says when Tora takes off, can you move your production out of DK, Denmark, aka Denmark, <laughs> aka Donkey Kong, will move out of Donkey Kong? Um, or oh, what are your thoughts here? Um, I think we will stay in Denmark. We have uh, three of the guys in the studio are French, the rest of us are Danish, but then we have um, <laughs> oh, oh, We have our. Uh, okay, in my, so, so. Um, so then we have an American um, executive producer, Ross Bradfield, over in Texas. Now agent is in yes. New York. New York. Um, the city. Yes, it is. Yeah, our musician is also in Denmark. We're very spread out with so the whole team, but mainly our offices in, in, in Denmark. And when, when that is said, we are actually um, considering to split up uh, right now. So we have one uh, point in Vivo and then another uh, office in Copenhagen where me and uh, maybe just moved to. Um, and the plan is uh, in the long run that we all want to move to Copenhagen together. But there is this sort of transition thing going on right now. So that uh, there's some spread out a little bit. Um, so yeah, we, we are going to stand there with them. And uh, I saw earlier that there was a guy saying, uh, um, there was a guy who asked how uh, the, the, the new series would, was going to be, and um, and if we were, this was my in the comments, but if we'll go back to the fantasy genre of uh, Return Villain, or if we continued with, the, who we continued with in the series, or if it was going to be Emerald or what, I think, in the new Kickstarter for the whole series, it should not be seen as a linear story where you follow two characters through all episodes. It's more a series of tales where we discover the universe and you know, in, in one episode you can, you can meet these weak zombies because corpses are weak, let's just face it. Um, and um, or you can like discover the lizard lands of uh, Alex of Mort. We much more dig into the areas and uh, and have the characters of the universe 
be the guides for you to, to see more. And I think it's going to be yeah, seeing more. I'm fancy. Uh, anyways, um, because in this way, it's all, it also becomes better because we can discover the universe more and tell the overall story of the, the treasure and the map and all these things. But by making, putting fantasy over it and focusing on the characters and putting the gates we love in it. Also, I saw one uh, mentioning uh, or asking how many uh, episodes there is for one season. Yeah, we're going to say uh, uh, but I think it's up oh, to yeah. Okay. yeah. First of all, I hope that we, we answer as many questions as possible and if not like directly to one guy, and I hope that we sort of uh, yeah, answer it in, in subject, something like that. Now, anyways, uh, the amount of episodes per season. Uh, I mean, we would like to continue with, with this unit as, as long time as people are offering. Um, so right now for this Kickstarter, we hope that we can, we can uh, reach a goal where we can make a lot of episodes, but let's, let's see at that point. Uh, but yeah, as mentioned, we hope to continue with our mm -hmm. uh, this Yeah, and then we have a guy called Stuka Booga. He is uh, asking, hello, gentlemen. Are y'all going to release? Uh, are y'all going to release an out of book or well book? And for the reward, we already have an out of book out. We still have a few left. I think we have fifty or something, uh, which we uh, which are available. But then we're going to make an out of book of the uh, tales of Ethan and uh, the show, and it's going to be much bigger than the first one because it was a longer production, obviously. Uh, but this one, uh, yeah, it's going to be very much with the artwork and the piece of the animation and the world descriptions and stuff like that. But then we're also coming out with a role-playing book. Um, and you can see all these new things, especially in the new Kickstarter. And the role-playing book is very interesting. It's uh, inviting people into the universe and uh, being a able to create the characters and uh, reading about the worlds. And it's a D6 system that is created by our friend, uh, yes. Um, and he's also part of the team. Um, it's really cool. That's two different hands. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's going to be super awesome, and we all really love to play Dungeons and Dragons. So, uh, so it's a it's a dream come true that is uh, possible because we have thrown ourselves into making fantasy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. What? Oh, I was going to say something. There was another question where. Somebody asked about the Brazilian guy who has an intern. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Victor uh, Becerra asks, how many internships are we taking? And would we take talk about the Brazilian guy who has even fair, our uh, beautiful Brazilian warrior who gave us uh, football t-shirts and he was so sweet mm. all the time. And uh, he was a very talented and very dedicated person. Um, yeah, something to say as well. No, it was. I mean, it was such a nice experience to have all the interns uh, with us. It was really, really cool. And it was so cool that he even wanted to travel all the way from Brazil to us. Um, we were really lucky to have a shout out of the Google that she was able to manage uh, accommodation for all of them. Um, that's something that the school in Geneva helped provide for us. It was really, really nice. That was, uh, I think, that was a good help for him as well. That he didn't have to find extra money and to pay for something like that. Um, so yeah, it was it was such a blast to to have all the guys over. And uh, yeah, even you cooked for us. You brought us uh, shirts and you left us some really nice and cute notes. And we miss you all. And uh, I hope you were you were doing really great. I saw you later on the earlier on the on the, on the chat. I hope you're still here. And here that uh, we love you. We love you. And um, for the how many internships we take, it's definitely going to be fewer this year than last year. Because last year we were in the middle of production while the interns came. So we had room for, I think we took five or six. Yeah, so, yeah. so the team became 14 people uh, in all. Mm. Um, and that was quite a big team for us because, as you know, we started out just being us three sitting in the summer house and fishing and uh, Doing fire camps, 
inviting uh, people, our friends over to help with artwork and stuff. But, um, but this year, if we take interns, it would probably be some on the reward projects for the series, especially if it goes through on the new Kickstarter for the series. And then we have some other projects as well, uh, which we're developing. Yeah, so um, we'll see. <laughs> that shadow's computer. <laughs> okay, can we move a little bit over here? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we're trying to move the comment computer. Uh, it's making T sounds. As long as it's not saying. It might, it might be. But, yeah. Put on my so uh, did you learn anything from our first Kickstarter campaign that might make the second one uh, easier for us to close? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is that... Sorry. Yeah, so uh, the thing is that when, when we did the first Kickstarter campaign, we did it uh, on top of making a company. Uh, and obviously, making a company, there, there's a lot of like tax rules and all kinds of stuff that we sort of have to know about and have to dig into. Uh, so right now, um, these kind of things are, are sort of settled, and the um, like practical stuff is solved. We have the work places, we have the licenses, we have everything that's sort of uh, important to 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 have as a studio. So therefore, we are much more prepared now. I was actually thinking, are you guys uh, interested in uh, us doing more of these things where you can hear, uh, where we answer your questions, because uh, it's actually pretty fun to uh, to just come up with all the information, uh, not just uh, an update, because it's, yeah. yeah, obviously you're here, so that's good, but uh, actually should do more and more frequently these kind of things. Mm, yeah, what you want to see from us in the future. If we end up making the series, we would like to, to do more of these things where we show you the process and stuff. Mm -hmm. We would like to know what, what type of uh, content you do that. Yeah. It can be a story, it can be animation, backgrounds, us behind the studio. Uh, yeah, everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah, like Choose Your Path. The last time we did these streaming things where. Um, where you could interact with uh, how the stories went. That was really fun. Um, I think we're considering doing more of that. Yeah, yeah, we will get a better microphone next time. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, okay. So a okay. lot of people were talking about the better mic. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. This mic is uh, from our Wacom. Uh, we sit and draw on this computer. We usually don't talk on this computer. So uh, I think the mic would be very, very, very relevant or just a normal computer. Because right now we're sitting at my sister's place and um, this was the best internet we could find because at the studio right now we're doing, um, we're doing the release and the Kickstarter, but also we're doing a thing called the, what's it called, the Children's uh, African Children's Organization. What's it called? Uh, I mean, it's called Brown Funding, which is very dangerous. Yeah. So it's a movie that will help uh, children in Africa uh, get food and all this. But uh, the internet sucks, so we had to move out of the office. The accents are thick. Is it a, can you, can you hear what we're saying or is it completely hot? I mean, I guess since you're answering our questions, you must be able to hear something for the, for the, oh, and what's your favorite characters? I think uh, I really like uh, Sira. She is the, the daughter of the third from the reward, the first one, the bachelor from the girl with the half moon, half circle hair. Uh, she has a daughter that uh, there's a comic coming out pretty soon that we're gonna see her in. And uh, I really like uh, her as a character. You can also see her in the, in the intro. I think she has a really interesting story and she has some very, uh, it's some really dark humor that you can make with her because she's very, um, messed up in her head, we can say, after watching some pretty tough stuff happen to, happening to her mother. And I think there's some really uh, sort of 
pushback comedy if you make it that that would uh, be fun to try out with the reward universe as well and just uh, the thugs are really like funny trio to interact with and uh, maybe they will meet with a villain you know maybe i think my favorite uh, is really tough i love all the characters but i think that Vito is my favorite character, of course. I mean, uh, I love him. <laughs> uh, I, would, I would maybe say actually Electron. Uh, because uh, I, I would maybe say Electron because he has this sort of childish child uh, style, even though he's a big barbarian uh, and he loves to be a man, but also because he has a lot of flaws in life. Uh, I love Emirate uh, as well. And uh, I really hope that we're gonna watch more of her. And that might be your choice as well for the Kickstarter thing. My girlfriend just came in, so uh, that was the face. Um, there was another question up here uh, about what weapon do you use in MH? Uh, Maybe mage, mage hands in your mage hands. More time in more time. More time. Okay, try to say what MH is, then we'll answer. There's another question up here. Um, I think it's really nice to do. You, you wanted us to do this kind of thing every second week, maybe uh, second week, third week, month would be, would be good. Uh, yeah, so you know what's going on. Man, we really need to get a new microphone. Everybody on, uh, wants this. Victor uh, says, Becerra asks if we have created secondary characters in our interns. I think we did a lot of drawings uh, and uh, drew each other during the production, uh, the production. but uh, we don't have the characters in the universe, but that would actually be a pretty good idea to uh, <laughs> implement us. Like we have our three in it, obviously, and then Ross is in it and we have all these different uh, characters in the show. Of course, the beggars uh, are taking the most space, but uh, that's also the most fun ones. Because it was a great, great experiment. And then someone is asking about the status of the game that we, we showed at some point. Um, we would definitely love to get that out. And we, it's still on the, on the board. Uh, it needs there are some small boxes that just basically needs to be fixed. But the thing is that when we put it out, these small boxes sort of uh, appeared and we got some comments stating that it's not 100% ready yet. So that's we sort of decided to, to um, put it down. Um, we have talked with the game studio actually about making uh, the reward games. So it might also be another concept coming out at some point. Um, Exactly what that should be is something that we haven't decided on yet at all. Um, but yeah. What else? What what is a uh, okay? Lucas Brand is saying yeah. My Corel starts saying, could you share your pitching experience a bit? What kind of questions you were asked and what kind of feedback you got? I know it's tough considering your show is clearly 18 plus. <laughs> it depends on what country you're from. Uh, for us, I think we would watch this when we were 13, 14 as well. Um, I guess in pitching, I think it's very, very much like Lucas Friend says here: uh, fast to answer everything and quick on the spot, and seem positive about your idea. But if it is an idea you're burning for and you love. It is much easier to pitch, but also when everyone has the same idea around it, it also creates less confusing uh, when you talk everybody about it. We so pitch a lot in, in France and, and festivals and markets and forums, and we actually also won some prizes for the projects. Um, but it is really, really, really hard to find uh, broadcasters, especially for this audience, as you say. And uh, clearly, we don't want to make the reward into a children's show. If we do that, it's not going to be the reward. It's going to be a new show. Uh, we created a, a, another series called Spirit Seeker, uh, which we have sent out to bigger uh, companies. Um, but the reward, we want to keep ourselves. Um, for, so we don't have to change it, and we can interact with it. And yes, the Kickstarter will come out the 20 seconds with the release to the personal aspect. 
Maybe a joint program, anyone? Sashili and S. That must be also the chat for me. Yeah, Photoshop for me too, but uh, TV paint is it's animation. Yeah, I also think Photoshop and uh, TV paint, but I also like Sketchbook Pro, but, but it's mostly for Androids. Yeah. Lin Storm says, uh, you guys saw some Greeks from Poland. It's actually one of our good friends. Yeah, classmates. Classmates, yeah. yeah. My name's. I, I, hope hope uh, uh, I hope you do some good starboarding down there. Okay, so we have Style Cobot. I know you guys got together through the animation workshop, right? But when did you guys decide to actually start a studio? And what was the biggest challenges from the start? Ooh, heavy subject you're opening up there. Um, I think right at the second year of school, me and Kenneth decided to shake our hands together and say, let's start a studio because we cannot see anywhere in the close by in the world where we can do what we love, which is like this mix of French and Japanese animations where we take all the stuff we like and experiment with it and tell fantasy stories, as you know. And we said, let's try it out and throw it out into it. And then Bo jumped on and said, that's a great idea, let's do it. And he was also a director on a 3D film at that point. So then we went out in the world as on an internship and we got to, uh, to, together, said, let's do it. And we said no to all the money from the society, which you get if you don't have a job, and said, we start a company. And um, that's basically the start. I think, uh, yeah, I'll throw it out to you guys now. But I think that the problems of a new company is to figure out what you really want, because everybody in the industry will uh, tell you what they think you should do, and everybody will say different things. So you need to be very clear what you want. Mm. And a short question, someone asked uh, if, where we're from. We are from Denmark. So uh, our action is even though, <laughs> Whoa. Even though our action sounds different, maybe it's just because we're from different parts uh, in Denmark. Um, so yeah, so change. So, a French producer over here has yeah. a pretty strong accent as well. You want to say hi, Charlotte? Hi, guys. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, through a screen. But uh, my accent isn't that thick anymore. Now I almost have a Danish accent when I'm talking, which is great. That's right? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, a mix between uh, French and German and English and uh, Danish accent. Great. Right, Neil? It's awesome. Yeah. She speaks not just a common tongue. But uh, it's nice that you see that you that we can see that you're so excited about the project. We can't wait to show to everyone <laughs> around the world. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna we're gonna get on screen. Okay. Yeah. Because you're not there yet. Ah, uh, that's nice. Some French people. Yeah, <laughs> You can just try to see a shallot. Let me just put this on again. Again, it's because we're doing this from a Wacom uh, companion where we draw on. So the mic is bad and uh, it's a bit hard to. Uh, People are so sweet, they speak in French. <laughs> yeah. That's uh -huh. nice. Uh, Salam, merci. Does there anyone speak Danish a little bit? Because it's always a shame that everyone knows some French, but no one knows any word in Danish. Well, it makes us more mystic. Yeah, we're mystic creatures. We're like puppets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, uh, Shara was really close to doing the voice for Amara. So, uh, in a way, yes. Yeah. We all uh, Amara in our earth somehow. Yeah. We all have a little bit of Amara in our hearts. Yeah. Come closer, Shara, so they can see you. In the forest? Yeah. Come into the forest. Yeah. Our camp is right over there. Okay. And the uh, bear was just killed. It tried to attack our tent. Mm. But uh, that's good because now we can lure. The, um, now the, we can finally enjoy the beer that we, uh, that we got. Exactly, and the cobalts and goblins will go uh, towards the dead flesh instead. It's a nice beard. <laughs> Light and sweet. Mm. Lucky, yeah. Is that ever? <laughs> it's great. Bonjour. Adult Swim, yeah, that could be a very good uh, platform. Um, I think that 
they have some really, really, really cool programs. I don't know if you've seen this crazy show called the Eric Andre Show and Eagle Heart and all these fun shows. But um, right now they are limiting the Europeans to see their content and all this kind of stuff. It's a bit sad. Um, but yeah, I think Adult Swim would be a great, great way to go as well. It would just not be the same, remember that. On YouTube, we are free to do whatever we want and do and interact with us um, and be a part of it much more. So right now, we're trying to start up to make it more an open universe. Someone wants us to talk about uh, Matthias. I uh, am. And if that is Matthias uh, Vino, then uh, we can only say positive things. Uh, the, uh, I mean, obviously, when, when you make a series without dialogue, then it's very much based on the soundscape and music as well. And he does some amazing stuff on the top of fantasy uh, and everything else he, he makes basically. He is a true talent. And uh, he is one of the guys who is sort of a part of the when it comes to the world from now to the end, hopefully. Um, so we will listen to a lot of his music in the future. It's great. Yeah, he's an amazing composer, really, really talented. And he's a very, very good uh, Dungeons and Dragons game uh, player as well. He knows how to put an act on. Yeah. Yes, a very, very, very beautiful uh, girlfriend. And uh, he's super awesome. Yes. Yeah, we love him. He's, a part, he's one, of the, one of the good old boys who was uh, there from the beginning doing the music for the award. Uh, Nimrod. He is uh, saying that his little brother is here and that he, uh, the little brother, wants to be an animator and that we should give him some tips. First of all, uh, hello. Hey. And uh, just, uh, yeah, if you leave in, uh, in the room that, uh, that, that you want to be an animator, never, uh, never forget that you want to do it. Go for it. Watch a lot of animation, uh, explore the media, see, uh, see what stuff you think is fun. Try and copy it, try and to see what they do. Find uh, there are many uh, different animation programs online you can get. It doesn't cost anything. I use something called uh, Easy Tune in the beginning just to play around and get a feel for it to see if, if I liked it, like to animate or not. Um, and then I just I looked at many different references. I downloaded the video clips and step framed it to see what the tricks they, they did. I just uh, really wanted to learn and just explore and research a lot and just uh, play with it. Uh, go ahead, don't be, don't be scared to fail. That's part of the learning process as well. Uh, enjoy it instead of fearing it. And then just throw yourself into it and see, uh, see where it takes you. And uh, keep on drawing monsters. Uh, I think we were all uh, around your age when uh, we decided to, to be an artist. Now. <laughs> but uh, it's a good age you have. If you just keep on drawing now, you become the best in the world. It's true. We all should be here still in our Arts. Yes, it's true. It's true. It's very true. Except now, I don't even have hair on my chest, but I have some some beard here and there. Okay, that's good. It's good that he's happy. That's good. We love. We love your uh, boy named not Kimmy. <laughs> this little brother. Little brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Little brother. Yeah. Cool. And again, thanks for all the for the guys who just uh, tuned in. Uh, thanks again so much for all the positive comments that yeah. you left for mm -hmm. the film. It means so much to us to finally see the reception of the film. And that it's been so positive, it's just amazing. It's uh, it's the, I mean the best, the best uh, reception possible to get. It's been so nice to read all your comments. So thank you so much for sharing your, your thoughts and taking your time to sit down and write uh, a comment for the film. It's, it's really, really nice. So thank you so much. Awesome. And we have, uh, yeah, I think we have around five minutes left. Uh, nine, um, seven minutes left. So just throw out what you have uh, of questions. Mm -hmm. I think this wallpaper is pretty good. We should uh, we need to, uh, the light. Mm -hmm. the Someone is asking about other um, animation schools in Europe. Um, I mean, we, we teamed up with uh, some really talented guys from France. Uh, apart from Charlotte, we also have uh, two other French guys. 
uh, few months ago. And they're from the French school, uh, Dublin, Dublin, which is also a really, really good school. And uh, something that you could definitely also uh, consider. You and, should, uh, you go, should go in and uh, watch the animation from uh, the YouTube channel, Dublin YouTube channel. Because uh, then you instantly see it. It's really, yeah. really high point and stuff. And they do. We're yeah. going to put out the videos as well. We need to go some things. Also. And uh, we love my pattern. It's amazing. Yeah, it's great. It's amazing. It's great. Yeah. City walks. It's cool. Yeah. And uh, it's yeah. An amazing reference. Yeah, it's great. And I like to use the switch plate in Monster Hunter. Yeah, 2D or 3D and the workflow is two very different approaches. Bye, Lucas. Bye bye, Lucas. Goodbye. Uh, talk to you uh, soon. I'm very sure about this. Um, Okay, but uh, yeah, 2D is a very, very um, different approach since it's all in the in the hands and you cheat a lot more. It's much more clear if you cheat in, in 3D because it's you know you have the objects moving. Um, but both are equally different in, in their ways. You know, you can make it look super up and you can make both look super good. For us, you know, 2D is just what we train ourselves up to do, and uh, you know. The final step of 3D, where you smoothen it and render it and lighten it and all these kind of things, is just not uh, what we're focused on, but we're super up for doing it in, in the future as well, especially when the games are on 20 made on, but we are 2D guys. But both movie is uh, 3D from the school. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's also tough just to divide up to 2D and 3D workflows because there are. Like, for instance, the war, the animation part is very different from Disney Studio's work side. So within the two different mediums, you can also go very different directions as well. So this is our question. Yeah. Um, I'm starting. Jerry's ribbon is saying, I'm starting an animation degree next year. I want to get into 2D hand drawn, but I feel like I suck. What do, I, do you suggest I do? Um, first of all, don't be afraid to suck. Everyone sucks when they start. That's just how it is. Uh, when you get out of the feeling that whenever you draw, you have to perform and you have to succeed, you have to get out of that mindset and just enjoy the process of drawing and just really see how it can uh, more let it be an exploration, and more an examination of drawing. That way the, the mindset will help you develop more rather than hold yourself back. Uh, 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 what do you call it, assignment or exercise that I would like to do is to go on YouTube, for example, find a, find a video, uh, maybe solo dance performance is actually good because you often see the whole body moving. And if you pause that, you can do really fast practice uh, from those positions and really pay attention to how especially the torso and hip are connected. Because animation, that is really, really important because the hip is normally the base for your, your weight and where the gravity is uh, most affecting you. So learning how those two uh, are combined and how you create twists and turns and then the, the proportions and stuff and the dynamic is a really good assignment just to get started with drawing. And then uh, research a lot of artists you like. Uh, again, just steal. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not wrong to steal because it's just your way of testing out what works. If it works, it works, it works. And then uh, just uh, really explore. But first of all, you have to uh, to just enjoy the process of drawing and not be scared to to fail. Everyone fails, and it's fine. That's how you learn. Yes, Kazarinski, one of our big followers on Twitter, is the helmet a reference picks up a magical object that influences him, or just a head. Um, the thing about it is not really a, it's it's the helmet he has on in the ending of the old war. Um, and um, it's mostly this this time here where he gets consumed by darkness, so it's a symbol of that more. Uh, but I think, yeah, it's probably a plus, plus four uh, defense helmet as well. Um, maybe it has protection from some fire or frost, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't identified it yet. Maybe it's a head of perception plus, so that he sees gold better. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the mirror is definitely magical. For the guys who haven't seen that uh, the movie yet, um, you will see that Elytran also comes to the mirror of uh, uh, that we to and Bill see themselves in. But uh, the magic it has on Elytran is much more different than uh, than it has on uh, on Bill. 
in God's layer. Stein, for what he uh, states that he just uh, applied for the animation workshop this year. Good luck for it. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, best of luck. Yeah. Tell us if you were entered or not. Yeah, if you go and there, we if might you go there, you, you should definitely drop by Sankit's studio and say hello. Yeah, you might even have us as teachers at some point. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, yeah we've been teaching a little bit over there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It totally goes that way to style. Yeah. Um, actually, before uh, before we made the the film, uh, no, before we we finished the film, we just put the helmet on and got consumed by darkness. But um, but it wasn't clear enough that uh, you know this was a trend transition. No transition. Transition. Thanks. Um, so we created those white. Uh, lines from the circle, which is uh, this kind of demi god of greed growing inside of him. Um, but there was another question earlier today, which was really uh, interesting. People said they wanted to see more of Emera um, and see where her, her journey took her. I don't want to spoil for the guys who haven't seen the film, but Emera um, actually, in the beginning, we storyboarded her whole, her whole story. To the end of the film, and it was her we followed. Mm. And I think when the movie's out, we're gonna put out the animatic where we follow the uh, Emirates yeah. uh, journey. So you can see the alternate endings and different paths we've been. Because the story has actually been quite different in the beginning. It's been quite Absolutely. a it's been quite a roller coaster in changing the story a lot of times. Mm. Uh, so it'd be fun to do uh, like a, a different cut, and then you can see how where where good the story went. Yeah. And show you like the, the hour of content we have. We are visiting different locations we didn't make anyway since all of that. It's gonna be just like deleted scenes in GDB. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, District Night is cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, totally agree about the circle. I think it's a really, really interesting symbol that it can be interpreted in so many ways. It can either be uh, balanced or it can be like be like a hole that can never be uh, filled up. It can be both scary and uh, ominous, but it can also be more sort of a peace, uh, tranquil symbol. So I think it's a really interesting one to work with. Mm. Just to uh, ask Kavrinsky again, yeah, uh, more emerald, she says. and. Um, of course, we can show the storyboards for Emirates uh, journey, but uh, in the Kickstarter for the series, you're also going to be able to vote for her to be in uh, in an episode uh, more because she has more mm. more to her. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a wide aspect of characters. Yeah, it would be, it would be really fun to tell her story as well. Mm. It's going to be really really nice as well to release the comic because then you can introduce a new character. Mm. And uh, she has a really, really strong motive as well, mm. and she is a strong leader. So it's going to be nice. So this will be put out um, during the Kickstarter. During the Kickstarter. Yeah, I think it's going to be one page, no, one chapter each day in a week or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be really crazy with the new thing we're doing here. Yeah. The couple Google is asking how many people are working on sales of left and how many work on the reward. On the reward, we were nine people, right? Working on it. And on sales of left hand, we've been at some point all the way up to 14. I was working on it. Um, and but it's all the way down to three. Yeah, so it's been very up and down. Uh, at max, we were probably 14 plus sound and uh, mm -hmm. stuff. So it's been, it's been quite varied. Yeah. Uh, but we, we were lucky to work with many, many talented people this time that, uh, that were really up for helping us out and to make it come true. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, that's the, that's the answer. Yeah, that's the answer. Well, I really like how these two films fit together, even though they're so different in style and mood and theme. Uh, I think when, um, when we're going to see these two tales, of course, there's going to be more, but these two tales, when you see them together, there's going to be more and more things popping up where they're explaining something that happened in the other film. Yeah. Do you have more questions? You guys going to play Richard? 
Yeah, I, I think, I don't know if I can afford it, but I really want to get a PS4 so I can play Bloodborne as well. But then I'm probably going to get to as well. And then uh, Jerry's Rippin is asking, how long is Tales of Lesson been in the works? And like, how long did it take from your original ideas to your final storyboard? Uh, when we, when the Kickstarter was funded, we went to Miguel's uh, parents' summer house and spent, uh, was it a month, right? Yeah, there, yeah. Just writing the story, putting up post-it notes on the wall, really going into depth with uh, writing a really rough outline for the story and starting some really early storyboards. Uh, to see the, the, the story more visually, because that's how we work so far all the time. And uh, we haven't really developed our script skills that much yet. We wanted to go into story about as soon as possible in a rough and, and quick way just to get the feeling of it. But I think oh, it's been a long, long race uh, with the uh, medic back and forth and story. But we even uh, changed it a little bit during the production because we found a big mistake in the, in the film and that the, one of the characters. I think it was actually MRF that her character didn't feel right enough around the middle part of the film. That uh, I, I won't spoil anything, but there was uh, the middle part of the film is actually one of the like last minute changes in the way. Uh, we even had them settle in a house and uh, uh, and uh, living in this cool cool city. We had designed and everything, but. Um, yeah, we will see. Yeah. We will see when the, when the other animatics. Yeah, yeah, when the alternative ending comes out. At one point, there were three months actually instead of uh, just two. And I think uh, one of the first animatics were like six to seven minutes long or something. Yeah. So uh, we just added a lot of minutes and so yeah. yeah. We're about to uh, round up here, but um, we are going to do more of these. And uh, we're so happy that uh, you came and joined us. Yeah. Um, some but guy a secret knahu knahu no um asks also make more like the tools of control father and uh we are actually planning to do this we really like um these little stories and that's what we want to focus more on here taking down in the universe and the land is actually split into six areas you have nest of lethran up here you have tolkien over here which is where the guards are, and there are underground uh, mines endlessly underneath that ground. You have the Valleks, where all the, the villains and lizard men live in swamps. And you have Tor, where Vito and Wilhelm and uh, the Windmill City and all these common places are. You have Sabrina, which is uh, where the locals and beautiful forests and volcano lands and where Lithuan comes from. This. And then down south, you have the desert of Kartoffel. And nobody really knows and have forgotten what is on the other side of that desert. So uh, we're going to explain much more of this universe in the Kickstarter. Yeah. yeah. But uh, do you have more questions? Or should we start rounding it up? Sita uh, is asking what kind of characters would you guys like to be if you lived in the universe of Tales of Lefman and the Revolt? Oh, man. Oh, that's a tough one, actually. Mm -hmm. I would like to be um, a relic. Like a frog creature, but with my own brain, so I could throw magic and be poisonous and uh, struggle a little bit in life, but be magical at the same time. Mm -hmm. We have to describe these creatures. Yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna dive into the like the world exploration and the explanation mm -hmm. during the Kickstarter of uh, the conceiving aspects of the different parts of the world. Who, who would you be, and uh, where would you? Be? Oh, I think uh, I think I would like to be actually the, one of the guys that you saw in Doom Plus Park, yeah, who, no. who lived in the Anomia, who lived in the, the, the desert. Because they, they're living in this always moving desert, but the, the sands are alive because of dark magic and the, an evil battle that was once was there. And uh, I think it would be cool to be one of those guides and live in that kind of mystical and, and, and weird place. Plus, it's very different from Denmark. You don't have any like strong sun or anything, so it would be quite a different place to be. That's what we discovered in uh, fantasy. You know, to travel out with swords, yeah, instead of guns. But I would also love to. I love forests. I would love to be in some sort of big magical forest with them. Like starting out as a human and developing into like, this kind of human Pegasus. Yeah, and there were blood skins as well. Uh, blue skins. Oh yeah. Oh, that would be cool. What would you be? Then <laughs> um, I think I would like to be 
kenne er nicht, das ist einfach ein paar Essen wie es zu mir. A little boy who can sort of uh, see this huge crazy world the whole time. I mean, the, the treasure map, meaning the future is just in front of them, so uh, that would be a really good starting point. Uh, this, uh, really cool. I mean, I hope this episode gets chosen by the Bayes as well. Mm. All right. Can people speak with voices in their universe or do they use magical link to understand? Sort of help. <laughs> All right, that means we have to leave. But uh, did you write the Did you write the, the no, no, I think it's uh, the the book. Uh, we're working, uh, working for Brand Fund, this uh, charity, charity uh, organization for Africa. That's really fun. It was food. Okay, um, <coughs> can people speak with voices in the universe or do they use magical wavelengths to understand you? I think we talked about this and actually they can speak together, but body language is more like a common mm. language because it's the series is for an international audience because yeah. of Kickstarter and uh, and uh, these countries. So yeah, we don't want to, to limit it to a specific nationality in order to, to understand what they say. So it should feel like they're actually talking, but uh, you don't necessarily need to hear what words to say. You just need to get the meaning of what they feel and what they convey. So in a way, you can say yes, they are talking, but uh, we just uh, like watch them when they don't talk. At the small points where they're not talking. Yeah, and uh, also there will be probably these weird, you know, probably numbers and things will have like different signs in the world. But it's just really interesting to see this universe being discovered outside of the of the animation. So we get the information out through text and through yeah. um, comics and through uh, like mysteries that we discover. Um, and then the show will be shown in this way where we can where we can really go crazy and not have it translated and limited by you know. You know, and, uh, and like uh, Danish one, like, they're scared of some fasties in, in the world. And you know, these kind of uh, of things, of course, we could make it English. But it's just really interesting to, to try to accept all languages. It's also, all language. it's also an interesting challenge as a storyteller to go for, for non dialogue, especially when it's such an epic tale and you have to explain many things. But I also think it fits actually very well. In my opinion, to a, a fantasy universe, because it makes it even more, in my opinion, open for imagination. That the, since we don't explain how this weapon works or how that mirror works, it's up for you as well to put your own meaning into it. Uh, we know exactly how it works, but it's really nice also to give you the freedom to sort of have your own take on the world in a way. But uh, I guess it's, uh, yeah. it's about time that we wrap yeah. it up. Let's wrap it up and see that we're happy you like the answers. Yeah. And uh, sorry for the microphone. Next time we'll come with this massive, uh, like, president uh, <laughs> where we can just get surround sound in your lovely ears. Yeah. If you've seen the King's Speech, it's like the last scene when we're walking through the corridor up to the, up to the microphone. It's uh, going to be like that. Yeah. We hate no, We hate bad sound, actually. We have, like, this mic for recording videos now but we have to figure something out live now yeah but uh, thanks for all the good questions yeah. and uh, again thank you for your comments on the on our video it was really nice yeah. and uh, i hope you enjoyed it yes yeah thanks and uh, see you soon um if not before then the 22nd yeah stay tuned for the big release ah! that's yeah that's gonna be awesome now with an intro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The intro is super awesome, by the way. It's gonna be so sweet to uh, to, Here, to uh, open the show with this intro. Matthias is a smooth voice. Far away, a thousand miles from home. It's gonna be great. Okay. Bye, bye. All right. I'm almost in my But uh, bye, guys. Goodbye. Good high fives. <laughs> See you guys and have a, have a great time. Yeah. Thank you. You guys are awesome as well. You're the best. Thanks so much for the support. And remember, the journey is the true reward. Yes. yes. It's a classic. Bye-bye. Peace out.